Understanding Backcountry Avalanche Advisories, produced by the New Zealand Mountain Safety Council. We have a team of forecasters who take the best information at hand and uh, make prediction as to what the avalanche conditions will be like over a given period. The information that we use to produce avalanche forecasts comes from what we call the information exchange which is a daily sharing of weather, snowpack and avalanche observations from the many ski patrols, the heli skiing, the cat skiing guides, the Department of Conservation and the roading avalanche programs. At the end of the day, everyone comes back to their computers to submit their data. Once that's done, it's available to the other avalanche professionals across New Zealand. We post our advisories on our website at avalanche.net.nz Advisories are also posted at ski fields, uh, often adjacent to departure points into backcountry areas. You may also see them printed and posted in dock offices and outdoor sports shops. This is the New Zealand Avalanche Danger Scale, which is an international standard that rates avalanche danger for backcountry recreationalists. It's a five-level scale that uses numbers, colors, icons, and signal words to set the danger rating. For each level, there are three columns. One gives general travel advice, the next gives the likelihood of avalanches, and the last describes avalanche size and distribution. The scale starts with low, which is green where natural avalanches are very unlikely and people triggering avalanches is also unlikely. Travel is generally safe, normal caution is advised. When you move into the moderate danger, natural avalanches are still unlikely, but people triggering avalanches becomes possible. This is when you want to start using extra caution in steeper terrain. Just because it says low or moderate does not mean you won't get caught. Moderate avalanche danger can still be pretty serious, especially if you start to push into steeper terrain. Considerable danger. This is the danger where most backcountry accidents happen. Natural avalanches become possible, but people triggering avalanches is probable. The next level is high. It's red. Both natural and human triggered avalanches are likely. This is the point where travel in backcountry areas is not recommended. Extreme danger is black. And that is when we expect widespread natural occurring avalanches. Travel should be confined to low angle terrain well away from any avalanche paths. On the home page, roll your mouse over a region's name. A single danger rating appears in the top left, with some basic advice below. Danger ratings give us a broad picture of what's generally happening but it doesn't allow us to give a detailed description of what's actually going on. To do this, we need to dig deeper. Back at the home page, by clicking on a region's name, you will go to that region's page, which contains a map of forecast zones along with other useful information relevant to that region. Each forecast zone will be colored in the danger rating color, and by rolling over the colored forecast zone, more advice will appear. To get the full detailed avalanche forecast, Click on the colored forecast map. Each forecast is dated in the top left corner. Make sure you are reading a valid edition. In New Zealand, we divide up the danger rating into three elevation bands. High alpine, alpine and subalpine. Each one of these bands gets a separate danger rating because conditions change with elevation. The beginning of each advisory gives a primary avalanche danger. This tells you what type of avalanche we feel may cause the most danger. Not all avalanche types perform the same. The icons help to indicate where the danger lies on the mountain rows. In this example, the considerable danger from wind slab will be concentrated on the north, northeast and east aspects in the high alpine and alpine elevations. Icons also show how likely you are to trigger and which size avalanches to expect. If danger will increase, stay the same, or ease. And what time of day might the avalanche beast wake up? 
This is of special concern with wet avalanches. Below this, we give a short description of each avalanche danger. Here we tell you of what kind of avalanche beast it is, how to spot the clues in identifying it, and how to avoid falling prey to it by using safe travel techniques. This should give you notes to take into the field when re-evaluating snowpack conditions. At the bottom of the page are three paragraphs. Firstly, there's current snowpack condition, which gives you a rundown on the weak features of the snowpack, where they are and what kind of stresses have been making them perform. Recent avalanche activity tells you where we have been seeing avalanches running. Avalanches are not like lightning. They do occur in the same places again and again. Paying attention to this paragraph is key to know where the beast may be lurking out there. Mountain weather drives avalanche conditions. This final paragraph gives us a sneak preview into if things are going to get better or worse. Is there a storm coming in? How much snow should arrive and when? What direction and how strong a wind will accompany it? And where will the snow end up? Weather should always be on your mind. It should be the first and last check of your trip planning process, whether it be a multi-day trip or a quick boot pack out the back door of your favorite ski field to escape the crowds. Things can change quickly in the mountains. Plan well, have contingencies, and be prepared to use them.